Hey, how's it going? We're going to pick it up in Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. So let's start in verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Um, so now Jesus asked the disciples a very, very interesting question. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Now, Jesus is referring to himself here. The Son of Man was something he sometimes called himself. And so he asked them, who do, you, who do people you know, say that I am? And they say, okay, they say John the Baptist, Elijah, others, still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Interesting answer. So apparently the people of this time period thought that maybe Jesus was one of these prophets that was um, resurrected. I don't know exactly where they might find that in the Old Testament that they would assume that um, that he was, you know, one of these, one of these prophets, you know, I, I don't know why they wouldn't necessarily just assume that he is, um, maybe he's not the Messiah, but he's just like an, another prophet or something like that. Um, but some of them are like, Hey, this is like Elijah coming, you know, come back to life, that sort of stuff. Interesting answers. This is kind of like what some of the public is thinking. So then Jesus is like, but what about you? Who do you, asking his disciples, say that I am? And so Simon Peter answers, and this is when he's still called Simon, and he says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And so then Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And so the interesting thing is, is that after that, then Jesus renames Simon. He renames him Peter. And so in my little footnote in my Bible, it says it means rock. And so right after he says, I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church. So Jesus gives Peter a new name. And I think this is so interesting. Because Peter, he's renamed Rock. And we see that in other parables. You know, you want to build uh, your foundation on the rock. Obviously, you know, rock is like you think of something that's stable. You know, strong foundation. You know, like that's the kind of thing that you think. And when you look at Peter and you think of somebody that's maybe stable, it's like he's the one that's like blurting out, questions, kind of saying whatever's on his mind, stepping out of the boat and then sinking, you know, like this dude is kind of all over the place, you know, cutting off, uh, cutting off somebody's ear when Jesus is being captured, you know, he's like, whoa, you know, like all over the place. And Jesus renames him Rock. And this is before he denies Jesus three times. So Peter later on, when Jesus is captured, uh, Peter is going to deny him three times. And before that, Jesus renames him Peter. And what I think is so interesting when I look at all the different times that somebody gets a new name in the Bible, you know, Abram goes to Abraham, a bunch of different people get new names. And the thing that is seemingly kind of a string across all of them is that it's not necessarily true immediately. You know, like, Peter isn't like a rock necessarily right now, but it's like what God is molding him to be, not necessarily looking at past mistakes or that sort of thing, you know, looking at Abraham and saying, you're a father, you know, a father of many nations, you know, he had no children, you know, proclaiming these things as though they were before they have really come to pass. And it's so neat to see that that's the case with Peter. Um, the same can really be true in our lives. I've heard it said before, God equips the called, not calls the equipped. Um, what is that phrase talking about? It's like, you know, Simon wasn't somebody that was just ready to go, ready to be a disciple immediately, but he was somebody that needed to be developed and he, God called him and Simon then answers. And so then 
Jesus sees something within him. He sees that he is a rock. He's going to do something, some really, really cool things in the book of Acts and really be pivotal in, in Christianity really getting started. And so Peter is somebody that wasn't necessarily there, wasn't somebody that was like equipped like the moment he was called, but then God equipped him over time. And it's the same thing with us. Maybe you're believing for something or maybe God has spoken something over you that you feel like is not true yet. Let's keep believing for that. Let's keep putting faith towards that because the reality is, it's like God comes through. If he gives you a promise, like he's going to lead you to that. And so if we can keep believing for that, we can see God really do amazing things. So Let's kind of pray, pray along these lines, uh, maybe for God to, to give us something, you know, for God to speak over us something like this, like a renaming kind of a thing. Um, or maybe if that's already happened for you, let's continue to pray for that sort of thing to come to pass. So let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you for your word. I thank you that you, you speak these things over us. You speak such, such statements of faith about our identity and who we are. I just so appreciate that you're a God that does that. And I just pray, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, that you would just speak that over each one of us, Lord God. Speak something like that over us. We just pray for that now in the name of Jesus. And for somebody that's had something spoken over them that maybe hasn't come to pass yet, we just pray, Lord, for an increase of faith. And we pray for that thing to come to pass. In Jesus' name. Amen.